But this goes with my whole thing. Um, I do enjoy a good hit piece. Don't we all like a good hit piece? Especially when it's full of lies. The far right myth continues to march on and it is not stopping. It's not stopping this invisible far right movement. Because um, this is just, just further evidence of, of just like how this thing is just blown out of complete proportion to the extent that now MI5 are getting involved, like chasing after, I don't know, like very minor threats. Apparently there's been a foiled, uh, some guy's been foiled in Leeds today or yesterday, whenever it was. Um, some guy was doing a far-right terror threat. Um, you know, but still, it's like, it's, it's the myth, the myth will not stop. And they will not stop peddling this nonsense as if we're supposed to be terrified of this, like, thing that's... And this kind of goes... <sighs> Tune into my podcast. It's going to be up tomorrow. It's supposed to be up today, but, you know, I got fucked up all weekend. Uh, I had to. It was doctor's orders. But where I... Uh, I'm fully dissecting the whole far-right myth on that because I keep touching on it. Um, like... Not that there isn't far right people, but like the the strength and volume and sort of um, you know how how big a threat and how what proportions this thing is 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 a mind fuck. Like it's 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 almost non-existent because um, they keep referencing groups that have like under a hundred members nationwide and shit like that who've done not a lot. You know what I mean? It's like <clears throat> I said, this is the new bogeyman that we have to deal with after nine eleven. It was just, it was the Muslim bogeyman. And that was blown out of proportion. But yet, there was still a lot of shit going on. Just people were choosing to go, oh no, it's blown out of proportion, even though it was quite big. But it definitely, the spotlight was way, we had more, they scared us more than than was warranted. It wasn't like 2011 onwards, like when ISIS rose, that's when shit really went down. Like ISIS inspired way more shit than Al Qaeda could ever dream of. Um, you know, and things have dropped down, and things have dropped off last year. Last year there was a huge decline, so now it's like it's all about far right shit, baby. So they got to keep peddling this this thing we're supposed to be scared of. There's always got to be a bogeyman, and this is the new one. So you know, it's pretty cool. I remember the communist bogeyman, uh, sort of. I remember the Berlin Wall falling, and um, then the communist bogeyman was dead. Then we had a few years without a legitimate bogeyman. Uh, then the the yeah the Islamic bogeyman came along. Now the Islamic bogeyman's falling off, and uh, people don't want to talk about Muslims anymore because it's just hugely divisive and it's just boring now. So, why do I have a far right bogeyman, which which is way more scary? Because you think about it, I mean, UK is like like eighty some. I can't remember what percentage is it. Like eighty six percent white or something like that. I mean, that's a that's, I mean, compared to how many Muslims there are, that's a shitload of people who are potential fucking terrorists. That means we've got to be terrified of almost everybody. Ooh, and that's some scary shit. So, you know, the far-right bogeyman is the best bogeyman for certain countries. Not so good in Africa um, or Asia, you know, where there's less honkies. But out here in, in Europe, honky land, out here in Honkyville, where the honky man is the, is the most man, the far... Oh, this is a good bogeyman. This means we can suspect everyone. I mean, I could be... I'm under suspicion. If you're white, you're under suspicion. We're all fucking potential white supremacist terrorists who have been radicalized by YouTube and shit. And Gab. And God knows what else. Bitchu and fucking 4chan and shit. Now, look, this is a proper hit piece because I can pretty much break down that the people they're talking about, right? Before we even see who they're talking about. Um, I guarantee you that mm -mm -mm. this is some bullshit. Five of the top far right figures are British. Five of the top far right are British. Now, there's already something wrong with this already because it says five of the top far right figures are British. We're the, we're the world's leaders in hate. All right. So is that across the world? I know it says we're the world leaders in hate, but five of the top far right figures. But where? I mean, how? How are they the top? Far right figures. What is the data? Well, let's have a look if there's any data. Let's have a look. This is nice. Britain dominates the top 10 list of leading far right influencers, according to the new report by Hope Not Hate. Yeah. I have a. See, it's weird because Hope Not Hate 
is um, supposed to be a legitimate good organization, but um, their credentials are seriously dubious. And when I was in, when I recorded this podcast, we took. Yeah, I mean, I was I was reading off um, their information on National Action, which is the prominent neo-Nazi group in the UK. Um, which turns out there's only like they're they're very very small compared to anything else, but they're the ones they're all talking about. And in their report on them, the the I mean, for for, for starters, the the English the language in it is it's terrible. It's it's written really poorly. Um, it's it's in some of it's incoherent and it's just not very good, and it doesn't make me have much trust and belief in hope not hate and it's very hyperbolic and they use a lot of misleading language a lot of, well leading language and um you know they use the word like comedic and it's just you'd have to look at it and i've looked more at the hope not hate website i don't think there's enough information on there um it's i i have doubts about it which is a fucking shame because something called hope not hate is an organization that's supposed to be going against far-right lunacy which can be a fucking problem i ain't fucking denying that there's no that isn't far-right problems there always has been and there probably always will be you know but um very disappointed in the work they do um um they need to do fucking better and the fact that they're involved in that they're citing this as well it's starting to make me Mm. That's not cool, man. Not cool. There's a lot of a lot of these organisations like Amnesty, a bit a bit fucking shady. You know what I mean? Red Cross are a bit. Sh- There's all these organisations are a bit. Ooh, they need looking into. Yeah. What was that? The Southern Poverty Law Centre. They got sued a couple of times. Or getting sued by uh, Ajit Nawaz now in it. I think he's won or something. Did he win? I can't remember. There's too much information these days for me to keep track of what's happened and what hasn't. Because usually, well, there's so much stuff that never happened that's false and made up these days. Um, it's it's very difficult. That's why I think I just don't remember stuff because I, I choose not to because I don't think it was. It probably wasn't real in the first place. You know, it's very difficult being alive these days, isn't it? Right. Much of their success being driven by followers outside the UK. Now here's your two far right leaders. Mother. <laughs> <coughs> now who we, who we got? We got Tommy Robinson and Katie Hopkins. <laughs> now Tommy Robinson, yeah. Um, <coughs> look, I don't, I don't buy into the whole thing that Tommy Robinson's like some centrist or, or you know, um, Tommy Robinson spouts some nonsense, man. If you didn't spout so much nonsense and be so hyperbolic about stuff. You know, maybe I'll give him a chance, like, but he, he doesn't, though. He's, he's just, he's, and he has become very popular. Like, they've had him on Fox News and shit, you know, people, I mean, he's, I've always seen Tommy Robinson's just an opportunist. There's nothing wrong with being an opportunist, but, you know, when you're sort of a divisive opportunist, it's a bit like, eh. But people do love him, though. Like, he's getting mad popular and he's getting behind Brexit and stuff like this. Um,. But is Tommy Robinson a far right figurehead? I mean, he's still. I'd put him in that bracket. I'd put him as far right, cause just because of the way he conducts himself and just his associations with certain organisations, and you know, it's going to be a, a very long time before I don't know. Before I, I forgot what I was saying. I just. I think it's fair enough, like, if you're going to call anyone far right, it's fair enough to call Tommy Robinson far, far right. To be honest, from my, in my opinion, just because of his history and the way he, just the way he conducts himself and the things he says still, like, um, you know, would I say he's as far right as neo-Nazi groups or Britain First? No, I wouldn't. No, not at all. Um, no, no, I wouldn't. Um... What else could be said about Tom Rose? I don't know. You know, he's just got to stop chatting so much shit. And he gets called out for it, like, but people just sort of blindly ignore it. Because they like, um, you know, just like him and shit, don't they? Like, but, you know, some some stuff he says, I'm like, yeah, that's fair enough. So, like, you know. And stuff I don't, you know, that's just about as far as I just, I haven't got much to consider about the man, to be honest. It's like, it's Tommy Robinson, isn't it? Who knows what he really bloody means? He's been, 
He's getting been, you know, he's made a career out of doing this shit. You know, did he walk away from the EDL because the far right faction was um, taking it over, or did he walk away to, you know, as because it was a better opportunity for him? Who knows? But him. Who knows? So I will give them Tommy Robinson. That's fair enough. Hopkins, though. Hopkins, the only re Hopkins is like riding the anti-immigration fucking gravy train. That's all she's doing. To call Katie Hopkins a far-right figurehead is a bit fucking stupid. Like, I mean, I mean, come on. If you're talking about right, far, this is the way I view it. Far left and far right, right, is, is, is some scary shit. That's nutters. We all agree. These people are nutters. The far left and the far right are nutters. They're the, not the sort of people you invite round. You don't go hang out a far right or far left rally and think it's a good thing to do. It's ridiculous. Someone goes, how can you proudly say, you're going, I'm far right, I'm far left? Well, you're far gone. What, what are you saying? You're far gone. I don't want to hang out with you and listen to your silly ideas. Jesus Christ. Do you know what I mean? It's, just, it's not cool, is it? It's just not cool. I mean, Hopkins. Oh, please. Really? We're supposed to be terrified of Hopkins. Jesus. I mean, if you're talking about here's the two of the biggest opportunists when it comes to race baiting. Well, not race. Uh, no, actually, no, not race baiting because that's what other people know. They're not race baiters. Um, they're very. They just oppose, you know, just Islam and anyone that comes from a predominantly Islamic country. That, and that's it. Hawkins has jumped on this train. Hawkins has just, you know, just made a career out of just pissing people off and winding people up. And now you're getting people <clears throat> who say, oh, I never liked her before, but I totally agree with what she's saying now. You know, she's she's obviously, you know, she needs a new she needs a new angle. Um, but to call Katie Hopkins far right is just a bit it's a bit silly. Because you, you look if you if you're trying to look, if you're trying to make if you're trying to make a case for the far right being terrifying as it because of pro, the real far the real far right and the real far left are scare is scary shit. Legitimately scary shit. Because you're talking about people who just have this this fucking this just this this tunnel vision. Of, of just like ah, that's it like that's the best way I can describe it just a tunnel vision of lunacy do you know what I mean fucking you're talking about you're talking about neo-nazis <laughs> and and people who believe in ethnostates and, and shit like this and ethnic cleansing and genocide and all kinds of you know what I mean just beating people up in the street killing people because they are what they shouldn't be because they're not you like you think Hopkins is really Hopkins Hopkins just says hyperbolic stuff about immigration matters and Brexit and shit like that um, you know she's just a wind up merchant mate you're giving a and they give Hopkins this sort of credentials oh my god why can't we go back to just Hopkins just being oh it's Hopkins mouthing off again trying to get attention you, you don't know how this works do you it's like and you're just now you're putting up on this pedestal as some sort of far right figurehead what Hopkins? Oh my God! What's next? What the fuck is next? What is next? Like seriously, you're gonna call Owen Jones Che Guevara? I mean, this is fucking ridiculous. Hopkins. Let's see what this nonsense peddler says. Five of the world's top ten far right activists on the internet. Oh, is this those internet people again? Are British? And you report into online extremism has found. And here we go, look. Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos. Far right figurehead. A homosexual Jew married to a black geezer is a far right figurehead. A homosexual Jew, ladies and gentlemen, called Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah we'll go with that one then yeah paul joseph watson <coughs> he's another just wind up merchant man paul joseph watson fucking far right figurehead stephen yaxley lennon aka what's on robson kate hopkins and <laughs> sargon of a card <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Boom! Well, you know, Saga of a Car probably doesn't do themselves any favours by like having interviews with Tommy Robinson and you know, he's kind of he's he's definitely anti Islam, but he's, he's he's like but he's also like he got in trouble for having a go you know, for trolling the fucking alt right. Calling him M bombs and shit. Like he's you know, he's very sort of I will give him something like I've seen a lot of his shit and I think it's, it's fairly it's fairly balanced. Do I agree with all of it? No, but it's just very balanced, like fair like looking at stuff fairly. And he's got a bit of a trolly nature. But like you you I mean, Jesus Christ. Sargon of a card. Paul Joseph was <laughs> All British born and amongst the demos influential far right activists. <laughs> He's a far right activist, you know. <laughs> That's pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, my God. Like, how unscary is that list of people? Like, how. This is the most unterrifying thing of us. Paul Joseph Watson. I'm oh, supposed to be. Sc- we're supposed to be scared, are we? Oh, oh not Paul Joseph Watson. I'm doing an anti-SJW video again. What Paul Joseph Watson does is say, "This is the man who does videos going, wearing tattoos is no longer cool. Conservatism is the new counterculture." That's Paul Joseph Watson. That's his bag. Mali and Napa's just wind up merch. It's like a saga of a card. I'm like, the findings come from a report by the political action group Hope Not Hate. The report surveys the far right's online elements, focusing in particular on personalities who leverage their large social media presence to agitate and direct global swarms of followers. The reports find a growth in traffic to far-right websites and in followers of far-right social media accounts. Well, like, what is far-right? I mean, Jesus Christ, if they're your fucking... They're your figureheads of the far-right. What about people like... What about actual far-right, proper far-right people? Like, I don't... This is mental. Like, you're talking about a threat. This is what really pisses me off, because there's genuine ones out there. You've got some genuine neo-Nazis out there. You've got people like Jez Turner... I think his name Jess Turner and fucking Jada Franson. Fucking Paul Golden. What about what about Nick fucking Griffin? He's still got a Twitter account. He's still on Twitter. Praising Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> what about them? What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, I met I met a genuine Nazi before. I meant to, no. I've got a couple of proper white supremacist types, people with fucking like white power and KKK tattooed on them. Nutters. One of them's reformed. One of them I haven't seen in years, and I doubt he's reformed. Um, like fucking lunatics. I, I met a guy who was in jail for fifteen years. Should have got longer, probably. Like he he murdered his he murdered his um his daughter's baby father because of the colour of his skin I worked with that guy I pissed him off once I was terrified but luckily I think he was just a racist so he, he didn't he didn't murder people that looked like him I don't know but knows, but knows maybe but um, that's apparently the reason for it like really and this is like that's scary shit this is scary fucking shit but this, like, I, I, I've met a guy, you know, just deliberately used to go into black areas and just fucking just have it. Just go, come on! Like, I've met people like that. I've met real... Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I've met real racist motherfuckers. And, and this, and this, and it's an actual group of hope not... He- this is very, very concerning. This is very concerning. Why aren't they looking at the... Like, this is very concerning. That this is what they'd spend their time doing. It's important not to see this statistic as a skyrocket in new British far-right figures, says Jewel. <laughs> Joe Mulhall, a senior researcher at Hope Not Hate. You're a senior researcher. You need to do better. Who worked on the report? Do better. He points out that several big American names, Infowars Alex Jones, 
most notably dropped off the list after being banned by YouTube and other platforms last year. So if you did your research, like you would see that he's still getting a significant, probably a significant amount of traffic. Like no one's going to stop watching Alex Jones. He's not on YouTube. He has his own website. He's a syndicated radio host. You idiots. <sighs> right. Nonetheless, he says these figures, Britishness is still relevant beyond the fact that many of them adopted social media very early and are sophisticated in the use of it. They speak English and so can be understood by like-minded activists across the whole of Europe. What? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> what do you mean? They speak English, so can be understood by like-minded activists across the whole of Europe. What, do everybody speak English in Europe now? Everybody. Everyone. What? I, I don't... I kind of get it, but... Oh, fuck this guy. Um, Baraf Ganesh, a researcher at the Oxford Inst Internet Institute and an expert in online extremism, says that while the list is accurate, it does skew towards anglophone influences. He also suggested that things would look different if the top ten focused on figures who are popular only in the US. I think Milo would be there, Paul Joseph Watson would be there, Tommy Robinson would be there. But I do not but I do think that some of the other names like Carl Benjamin, aka Sargon of a Card, would drop out. For Ganesh, the first element that explains the high number of Brits on the list is obvious, namely that both the US and the UK are countries with high levels of penetration on social media, particularly Twitter. Because of this, he says, I think there's been a lot of these people who see it as a kind of opportunity. I can become an influencer on Twitter around these far-right issues. See, the, the issues you're talking about aren't necessarily far-right issues. Like, everything is... See, that's the problem, isn't it? Around um, these far right issues. You see, you just get laid as soon as. Ah, it's fucking mental. As soon as you have a concern about certain things or you start talk, See, this is what I'm saying. Like, this is what pe pushes people over to the fucking dark side in the first place. It's because no one's willing to have conversations that, that concerns people. And as soon as you start talking about it and dissecting it, then they call you far right and they call you racist. This is what I said years ago. I said, you need to stop doing this. Because I saw the trend, and it's just got worse. Like this is what I'm doing. It's, it's just like people are fucking stupid. Like, people are fucking stupid. And they got people working for legitimate organisations that are fucking stupid. I mean, this is mental. <clears throat> why? Why aren't you? If there's genuine neo-Nazis out there, why aren't you concentrating on these fucking neo-Nazis? Like one's going and doing fucking see Kyle fucking flash mobs and shit like what, what like you talk about youtubers fucking hopkins <laughs> it's mental uh exclude milo from the list but paul joseph watson and tom uh, tom Robinson and kitty hopkins they're particularly useful for the far right they translate this idea about cultural decline and attacks on the west and the uk from foreigners primarily muslims into something for American audiences as well. I mean, there's you know there's 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 elements of truth in there. I'm going to deny that. You know they do <clears throat> they do overplay some of the stuff. You know like no go zones and blah blah blah. Yada 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 yada. I mean everything's blown out of proportion. You know. Um, yeah, the no go. Oh, here it says it here. The no go zones in Birmingham confirm the well view of a sympathetic foreign audience and drive funding and influence. I'll tell you what, there's probably a lot of no go areas in Birmingham, but I don't think it's all down to uh, Muslims. I think it's just down to Birmingham being a fucking gun toting shithole, isn't it? Right, in the UK, the far right tends to. I'm so sorry, guys, I've got family there. But come on. In the UK, the far right tends to focus on the city of Gothenburg in Sweden, which has a relatively high Muslim population. Ganesh explains. They talk about how culture is being erased and how white people there are under threat. And they use that as an example of how this is going to come to Britain. That's what these influencers do, but for American audiences. The thing is, if if this, this is another problem, it's like if if you any especially living in the UK with like history of stuff, it's like if you point at any Anything that isn't like any minority can be under threat from sort of things, and if you talk about a minority of certain 
type of people being under threat from this from a threat of some kind like black people being under threat from a white supremacist movement right that's fine to say but it is a thing it's a thing now and it pisses people off like i ain't i don't give a fuck but like people do get pissed off when they say oh you know oh if, if people are upset that they think what um your whiteness is if you're white you're under a threat or your culture or your white culture is under a threat then suddenly you're you're a fucking you know you, you want to have an, a fucking ethno state and burn people it's like no it's like and then people people do get really pissed off when you constantly get labeled for saying shit like that this is why people are pissed off am i pissed off no but i understand why people are pissed off and i wish people would under like why can't you just like see all the points of view and then you shut down points of view it's it's very it's very bad the collaboration extends to whole platforms ganesh says he uses the example of gab a free speech absolutist twitter like platform popular with the far right as an example of what he calls alt tech god well, they had to go after gab didn't they as well I feel sorry for the people that invented Gab. <laughs> uh, Moho agrees. He points out that, paradoxically, for nationalists, these groups strive to extend their global reach. The Free Tommy Robinson march was timed to coincide with Donald Trump's visit to the UK in July. The Yellow Vest staking out politicians in Westminster took their name from France's Gilets Jaunes. The idea of a global cultural conflict makes their beliefs more attractive. In North America... Because of their view of Britain, they see someone like Tommy Robinson as a soldier of the front line in the war against Muslims in a clash of civilizations. They want to hear that Europe is at war. They want to hear that, do they? Looking forward to 2019, the report notes that there have been some pushback against these figures. Social media companies, for instance, are increasingly removing leading far-right figures and their platforms. But these groups often manage to recover from their setbacks. Something like Turning Point UK, it seemed to be a disaster at launch. But these groups often come back and it's about... So now they, this is, I've seen someone say about Turning Point. But Turning Point is that thing that fucking... That kid and Candy Sowens is part of. That's like for young conservatives. Now they're calling it Turning... Like, I don't see anything about Turning Point UK or Turning Point being like particularly far right. Unless you have that, unless you have that fucking, that tunnel vision. It's all about tunnel vision. There's people, that, this, is, this is so bizarre. Like, it's been burnt out of proportion. Like I said, look, if you're fucking far left or you're far right, you only have tunnel vision. You only see things the way you want to see them. Without any nuances, without any proper, without educating yourself. It's very bad. It's very poor quality. I'm very, very disappointed. Um... And it, you know, what's a, I mean, it's no surprise. This, this just has all the right <laughs> points for a classic hit piece. Oh, God. <laughs> Hopkins is in there. <laughs> it's just hilarious. It's Kate Hopkins is now a far right figurehead, is she? <laughs> Like, I just like, how can you not see that as being absolutely hilarious as if this this is this is this is terror this is this is supposed to terrify people and it's like what Hopkins oh my god like oh look this is the Twitter data to show who's backing Tommy Robinson <laughs> and more hope not hate <laughs> Um, 7,000 accounts that have used these three hashtags are far more likely to follow US-based right-wing Twitter feeds than UK-based. What What are these hashtags? Tommy Robinson, free Tommy, free Tommy Robinson. I mean, look. You want to go in the whole Tommy Robinson thing? It's like, look. He's become popular. There's not a rise of far right. He's just become popular with more moderate people now. Because, I tell you why, it's because they see him as someone who's anti-establishment, someone who says what he bloody thinks, and they see him as someone who's sort of... Because he's, he's he's jumping on the cause. He's an opportunist, man. That Count Dankula thing went down. He was straight in there, grabbed onto him, and, you know, used that, you know, you know, 
He used that as an opportunity. He's using Brexit as an opportunity. Like I said, this is out with me shitting on him or applauding him. I'm just saying this is this is how it, this is how he maneuvers. He's boosting his profile, and the fact is, um, fucking look after. You only have to look at like the rise in terrorism from 2011 onwards, when terrorism worldwide went fucking skyrocketed. Um, ISIS and like ISIS were very influential. And you don't realize how bad it, it got. Like I thought it was at a steady rate, but if you actually look at the data, it's just a huge rise in it. So, and after the, the spate of attacks uh, that happened in the UK and across Europe, what the fuck do you expect people to like? What? Because it's it's talked about so much. I keep saying this. Like, you, what do you expect? Do you expect people to be super chill about all this stuff? Like, we're living in a very peaceful time, sort of. Uh, <laughs> apart from those countries that are totally not at peace. Um, people aren't used to this kind of shit no more. You know, it ain't like the old days when it was like, <clears throat> you know, just fucking miserable and dead and full of death. Like I don't know what you, what people think is going to happen. It's not a rise in the far right. It's just a rise in in people just want closed borders now. And some countries like uh, I mean, just look at Jap- country like Japan or even South Korea, who are like very nationalist and very about. Just look into it about different countries and how they view outsiders and their immigration policies and so on and so forth and yet we have <clears throat> especially across Europe it's like just oh everybody like it is kind of like yeah every fucker come in man just come in just come in like look we, have, we let a lot of people in um and it's and problems of just can you get problems like just problems have been happening stuff's been going on people don't like it and when other people don't speak up when other people don't you know listen to people's concerns then other people will fucking listen to their concerns and then you've lost those people and then what you do just just shit all over them when they say something you don't that makes you feel uncomfortable like that's not how you that's not how you go about <clears throat> it's not how you go about it is it so if you if anything organizations like this like wired fucking you know news you know media outlets like this and an organization I'm going to have to say it an organization like Hope Not Hate that doesn't seem to be doing a, uh, their job properly and seems to be fueling this thing because obviously I mean hey I don't want to call me a conspiracy theorist but if they're a non-profit organization I mean how are you going to stay you know how are you going to stay in business um, or how are you going to get more funding well you just fuel the fire just a theory but that's kind of what happens like no cure for cancer when, you know, when billions and billions of pounds get made by, uh, you know, cancer drug companies and so on. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, <clears throat> like who, who, you know, you have a cause, you have a reason, your reason to exist is to fight this stuff. You know, you're fighting against that, and if there's no real enemy, you don't really you you're not warranted to kind of exist, are you? You know, so it's in that. Just think about it, you know the propaganda of different organisations. The only reason that they exist and they continue to exist, like people get getting paid, people have jobs there and shit. You know, this is what people do. So it's it's in their best interest to keep fueling this fire. That's that's like not even a you know it's a, it's a cinder. It's a, it's a tiny smouldering cinder. They're making it out to be a fucking raging bushfire. It's it's like it's not. It's, it's a leaf that got blown out. You're saying the whole fucking forest is on fire. It's ridiculous. So you know, um, organizations like this, media outlets like this. This is this is there. If, if you, if anyone's to blame <clears throat> for people like Hopkins and Robinson. Um, getting a higher profile, you're complicit and to blame as well. <clears throat> the same way 
in exactly the same way with them having a go at that um, Shamima Begum saying you're you know you're the poster child for fucking ISIS bride recruitment it's like yeah but she didn't the media the media outlets made her the fucking poster child and ISIS ran with it as well you pushed their propaganda as much as they did you were complicit in their propaganda pushing you helped spread their message of fear like these organizations they're all complicit they're all just <clears throat> they need to justify their existence these motherfuckers need to justify their existence and not go down the toilet like and not lose their careers so they'll do whatever it, they, they don't care they don't care about, they just don't care who they smear what bullshit they spread and how and they don't care about fear mongering never have it's all in their best interest to keep just to keep the fear machine going like the politics of fear has found a new home and it's got a new bogeyman for you to be scared of and they're going to keep pushing this because it makes them money and outrage culture is not dead and this is what this is what we're left with this sort of baseless this sort of nonsense because it is nonsense i think you know there's other people who could better explain why this is all nonsense to me No, there isn't actually. I'm just telling you, it's fucking nonsense. It's just nonsense. Very disappointed. So I'll be very wary of a lot of um, these organisations claiming that they're doing like good work and stuff because they're, they're not. Their research. I've seen. I've seen it. Some of their research is is just completely convoluted. And they're looking at everything through a certain type of lens, not a broad spectrum, not taking in nuances like none of that. Badly written, man. This is all fucking depressing. Because <laughs> uh, it's easy for them just to say, oh, far right this and far right that, without actually saying, um, explaining why they're far right. It's just saying, uh, or all they say is like, it's just anti Muslim uh, agenda. Well, it's, it's not, <clears throat> it's Muslim extremism. The only thing that unites those names there are their criticisms of Islam, not like actively campaigning. Because if you went and looked at like everything that Milo Yiannopoulos does, or Paul Joseph Watson, or Sargon of Akkad, like you'd see a hell of a lot of different content and a hell of a lot of different things that they talk about. Do you know what I mean? So they're not exactly they're not like like they like they're provocateurs and content creators at the end of the day. So they talk about a lot of fucking different shit. So I don't think you, you know, if you're like a far right figurehead, then you're. That's why I'd say Tommy Robinson is the only, it's the only one you could justify calling far right because he has a like he's, he's jumped on a few other trends, like freedom of speech and Brexit. But it's all coming back to his his core cause since day dot since we first knew his name has been is 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 anti Islam. It's anti Islam. So that's. That's a that's how you could say that as a far right figurehead if you want you know because he's he has a common cause like but you're talking about provocateurs and content creators like Hopkins as well Hopkins says oh I don't like kids who have fucking who are named after countries or kids called Riley and shit she's a provocateur as well who talks about a hell of a lot of subjects whichever works for her brand like so you can't man like he, I call them far right figureheads is uh, is is a far right figurehead is someone who leads by example so that would be someone who is down with a fucking cause at 100% this is, these people aren't <laughs> Tommy Robinson's the only one that you could say that about but the rest of them no no they do a hell of a lot of different things Hopkins has just recently sort of because she's fallen, you know, she's lost loads of platforms. So now she's just putting out her videos, um, you know, and she's seen that. Um, and she's saying about fucking, you know, mouthing off Idris Elba that he couldn't be James Bond. And, and she just does shit like that, just being provocative as usual, getting clicks, winding people up. Like, Man, you know what I mean? This, this, whole, this whole narrative of this, this far right menace. Is, is is bewildering. It's like you need to calm the fuck down. We've been hoodwinked before. I've been. This ain't the first rodeo, man. We've had scaremongering before. You know, 
Uh, everyone remembers the war on terror, motherfuckers, right? And how that fucking scared us into supporting a diabolical acts. Right? Do you want that? That? Do you want that kind of shit again? What do you want? Bomb Poland? What the fuck do you want? Like, what? What's your end game out of this? Every year, fucking swine flu, bird flu, fucking Captain, Captain Akbar flu. Like, like, how many flus are there for us to be terrified as well? Do you know what I mean? There's always something to make us shit our pants. There's always something. Like, every fucking, every autumn, late summer autumn, there's a new spider to be scared of in the UK. Oh, the false widow spider. The, the fucking, the brain eating fucking hamster spider. Beware, brain eat. Massive brain-eating hamster spiders are on the fucking rise. Oh, my God. Oh, here's a new disease coming all the way from China. What's it called? I don't know. Fucking, fucking vulture, vulture diabetes. Vulture diabetes. Yes. You get bitten by one of these fucking vulture. If you kiss someone who's got vulture diabetes, you're fucked. <gasps> ah! And then it just disappears again. So, yeah. Um. So, enough of the fucking hyperbolic... Uh, nonsense, fear mongering, f- fucking spin machine. I'm I'm just totally done with it, and this is just, just this is pathetic. Um, this is just pathetic, to be honest. I just see this like, stop trying to convince us that something this this shit is not. Shit is just, it's a fucking, it's just a lie. Like it's just a lie, and then just throwing anyone in there, people who've just, oh, god. Really? We're the world leaders in hate. Yeah, well, you're haters too. <laughs> world leaders.